Hey folks, I said I'd record a video showing the changes to my world right after I did one for Xerxes, so here it is. I'm actually recording this literally right after, but it may not be uploaded until a day or two later. Such is life. At least, such is life in Australia. This might not look familiar because this isn't my main station. This is actually the mining outpost that was in one of my other videos. Now at that point it was just a couple of blocks stuck in the face of the asteroid. It's developed a little bit since then. So if we look back behind us, there's home. Um, you can see the command ship floating just behind it. Obviously the command ship is sheltered by the asteroid, meteors are turned off at the moment, but um, because of the way the lighting renders in this game, any object as far away as that will appear fully lit, whether it's in an asteroid shadow or not. Which is unfortunate, but I would imagine it's difficult to get the, uh, the game to render shadow from that distance without absolutely murdering performance. Anyway, let's get back to the actual changes here. So what I did was uh, actually built the living quarters first and then kind of worked my way out. So we've got a nice landing pad here. This was originally just a single block thick landing pad. Um, then I started hanging utilities off the bottom of it and before I knew it I decided to build another auxiliary deck under it. The idea being that you can land small ships here, this is obviously heavy armour so it's safe to land on. Um, you know, if you want to just bring in a small shuttle or something or just park a construction ship here, you can make it happen. And then you've got an airlock, but before we go in, I'd like to show off this, which is the small ship docking array. This is very obviously inspired by the one on Cosmograd, and indeed Xerxes has started building a smaller version. Uh, in his asteroid station. So if we take a close look at it, it's very similar to Xerxes' design. We have currently three ships docked. You may notice that second one. It looks familiar, but the colors are different. That's because I actually built a second Malyutka mining drone. Um, the first one is the yellow and red one. The orange and black one is the second. They're more or less identical. Um, there are some small differences, the color of the navigation lights and stuff, because I was too lazy to just directly copy the colors across, um, and I like to have a little variation, obviously the colors are different too. And the uh, second unit also, I stuffed up and put the cargo containers the wrong way around, so although the cargo containers are still conveyed, you can't access them from the top or bottom of the ship like you can on the other, you can only access through the connector or the sides of the drills, which really isn't an issue at all, um, but it was nice to be able to run up to the other one and grab stuff out without having to fly around the back of it or reach down into the drills. Um, this is a familiar ship by now, I would hope. This is Pabieta, my little building ship. I've got it docked here since I was just building a station with it, so um, I didn't see any reason to fly it all the way back yet um, since I'm not done building. The lower docking points are obviously intended for drones because there's no catwalk down there. The upper points all have catwalks so you can walk right up to the ship and although it's kind of hard to demonstrate with Pabieta because it has this big uh, collector on the back of it that gets in the way, you can actually hop onto the ship and just walk right up to the cockpit. And then it can be difficult to back you get back up here if you've, uh, if you've got a design like this. So it's not perfect, but it's alright. Um, this, I'm gonna put something here. I was thinking of putting a tunnel through to the actual interior of the station, but I've kind of gone back on that idea now. I might just put something else here instead, like a health charger or whatever. Um, I'll decide on it later. This is the beacon, obviously, to show where the station is. It's pretty much concealed by armor blocks. The only place it, sh it gives off any light is this staircase. Um, so it's useful lighting for the staircase, but it's not much good for much else. Um, but it is still a beacon, so it broadcasts and you can see it from a distance, even if the light isn't obvious. Now, if I fly back off the catwalk again, you can see I've got windows under the landing pad. They weren't there originally. What happened was, if I fly down here and turn my flashlight on, you can see that the 
actual machinery of the station comes out from the inside of the asteroid and a lot of the larger stuff, refineries, uh, arc furnaces and the stone crusher, as well as the single small reactor that currently powers it, is all on the outside. I'm probably going to have to throw another small reactor in. I'm thinking of putting it actually directly below the first one connecting up to the stone crusher. Maybe even a third. I'm trying to keep it so that uh, I don't change the layout too much, so it'll just replace one of the corner conveyor parts. Anyway, um, those other conveyors, the white ones, run up into the inside of the station. We've got an emergency access hatch there in the floor of the, uh, the annex to the landing pad, which you'll see in a moment. And we've also got an antenna which is serving as a relay, so when you control the Malutka units, you can control them either from here, or from either of our other two established stations, and this will relay the signal. If they fly outside the signal, obviously you lose control of them, and bad shit can potentially happen. So we don't want any of that. That's not the button I'm looking for. That is the button I'm looking for. Obviously it's starting to get a bit cluttered, uh, hardwise with all these beacons and antennas and so on and so forth. I'm probably going to have to start switching beacons off just to clear the HUD a bit. Most of our ships have lights on them anyway, so they're pretty easy to spot. So this is the Annex. Um, this isn't really finished. It's not even final. Uh, I may just take it apart and change the layout. It's sort of intended as a just a waiting area, basically. So if a ship comes in and docks, the crew can come and just mess around in here until it's time to go. So as such it's not hooked up to the main part of the station and it's just mostly equipped stuff to pass the time so they can, you know, stand around play pool or table tennis or have something to eat or have a drink, or watch TV or whatever. It's just a, or you know, work out. It's just like a sort of basic, um, basic waiting lounge leisure area sort of rolled into one got windows here, I don't know why, I just decided to have a view onto the machinery there. These are the interior lights here blocking the conveyor access for the cargo container. Um, since, like, it doesn't look too bad, but it does look kind of silly that you can grab stuff through here. Just kind of hand wave it as them being hinged panels, that's what I'm doing. Obviously we've got our little airlock here with its own light. Doesn't really need it because the uh, beacon is actually so bright it illuminates that airlock as well. Anyway, that's enough on the outside, but let's head inside. This isn't complete yet, still got a fair bit to do. This is our airlock, we've got a little work desk, I'm not sure if I want to keep that there or not. Um, I'm thinking of swapping it for a health charger, simply because there's no other space to put a health charger except for outside, which I may also do. Um, we've got lockers here and a suit changer, so this is like where you gear up to go out of the airlock. And then an oxygen generator for, you know, filling it with air. Kind of an important feature of an airlock. This comes out into the main entrance, where our gravity generator is, and some machinery. We've got assemblers built into the walls, one there, two up where I'm looking now, on the second floor. And we've got two uh, hydroponics units here. That's a conveyor block behind the catwalk there. So this station's not designed to be as uh, major and as self-sufficient as Zvezda station. It's more of a little auxiliary station for mining crews to just um, do shift work in basically. So you wouldn't normally have more than three or four people in here at a time uh, except maybe a, a ship crew down in the annex to the landing pad. So this is the mess. It's pretty small. It only needs to serve three or four people as I said so it doesn't really need to be much bigger than this. And then we go into the control room, and this is where the bunks are. Hopefully none of the crew are inclined to sleepwalking because the bunks are quite high off the floor. They've got a pool table in here to pass the time, a TV. Um, if there was a 
coffee table block that was not at a height where it would completely block the TV, I would have put one there, but I just decided, fuck it, I'll use a pool table. It could be a, a coffee table with uh, built-in cup holders. Anyway, here's the control panel. And it has a single control seat, which actually looks directly towards the asteroids Vesta is built into. You can actually see the industrial command ship there. So the idea of this is going to be, um, this was originally going to be where you would kind of control incoming ships going for the landing pad, but obviously you cannot see the landing pad from here, so instead, if we go for landing pad camera, we have this. So you can still kind of tell what's going on and control incoming ships. Um, I'm thinking of putting another one over the docking station to serve that, but that's for a later day. We've got some storage here, obviously, and an oxygen generator behind it. Now, what I was thinking is, eventually this station, along with uh, Xerxes station, will have mass drivers, and the idea is, oh, before I forget, um, there will be another room coming up here with the bathroom in it, so that's, don't freak out, um, there's going to be a bathroom. It's just not finished yet. Anyway, um, there will be a system of mass drivers, so essentially each major station we have in this asteroid cluster will have a mass driver and a mass collector. So the idea being that say you've been producing, um, well you've, you've been collecting raw ores here, you know, it's a mining station after all and it's surrounded by ice asteroids, um, which are full of ice and uranium and helium and all sorts of good, good shit that you um, can't really get on our home asteroid or the other asteroids near it. Well, you just load it up into the mass dri uh, driver, which will be probably located up here somewhere, or either that or maybe underneath the landing pad, and it shoots it straight off towards Zvezda, which catches it in its uh, mass collector, and then it can shoot components over here so I can build stuff, um, that way I don't have to do constant milk runs back and forth with Pabieta. It also means that the mining ships don't have to constantly switch back and forth between stations, I can just keep them docked here, do all my mining in this sort of area, um, not, preferably not on the main part of this asteroid, maybe on the other side where the station won't be affected, um, but certainly on those ones over there, and this, the uh, asteroid clusters between the two stations and then I won't have to take them back and forth constantly, which is even more of a pain for remote control ships than it is for the manned ships, um, because you have to make sure you're flying very carefully with the uh, decreased situational awareness. Other than that, I'm not sure if Xerxes has actually done anything on his station, but we may as well go and take a look. Um, that asteroid there, the really smooth looking ones with the big round holes, I'm thinking of building a station in that too. It's uh, the same type as on my old world, with the big tunnel that runs all the way through it that you can just plug either end of and make a really awesome station, so uh, that's basically what I was thinking of doing. So our scientific frigate is still parked in the entrance to the asteroid here. Just sort of chilling out. Um, there's nothing really for it to do yet. I just decided to park it here so it's not causing my frame rate to chug it even worse around the uh, front of Zvezda. It also casts some pretty cool light towards Xerxes station which is just in here. And I'm going to need my flashlight for this one. Oh yeah, I think uh, I haven't showed this actually so we have got something new after all. Xerxes has been madly expanding his industry, as you can probably see. He now has more refineries than God, and several large cargo containers. So he's been busy. He is certainly a very busy worker. If I leave him alone for 10 minutes, he's doubled the size of his station. So you can see here his mining ship is actually docked at the moment. It looks like he's knocked a drill off. In fact, he has not to drill off. I'm assuming he will be fixing that shortly. Xerxes' ships tend to be pretty rough and ready, um, and he tends to worry about repairing them only when they get to a stage where they're no longer functional. So I'm not sure how long it will take him to do that, but he will eventually. Obviously, he gets a lot more 
or um, per trip out of that thing than I do out of either Malyuka. And here we have his little worker ship. So he's still got the sort of framework dot going on, although it's a slightly different design than his station at Cosmograd. And now this is what I want to show you, this section here is new. So if you'll forgive the steam bleep looping, let's head into the airlock and see what Xerxes has done to this station. Now this is the command center and med bay and bathroom and everything else. It's also loud as hell. I'm not even sure if I'm get my voice over it. That's because there are about, I want to say, five or six refineries around us all working plus several, uh, several assemblers. So it's very noisy here. In the other direction and away from the worst of the noise, we have the habitation module with a TV, a nice bed set up here. No doubt the view would be very nice if it wasn't dark as fuck outside. And of course some nice subdued lighting, but this is uh, again demonstrating the problem with the lighting in Space Engineers. Because of the way Keen programmed the interior lights, I should go over in detail about the lights actually. Spotlights actually cast proper light, as you can tell. Um, they cast dynamic shadows, they actually originate from the point of the spotlight, you know, they're, they're fairly functional lights. This is why they kill your frame rate, um, because they are casting dynamic shadows, and a lot of the stuff in this game has a surprising number of polygons per block. I was actually quite astonished when I found out how many polys some of these models have. And then again, I am still mentally stuck in the year 2005, where 3,000 polys is considered high poly for a first-person weapon model. Anyway, I digress. Um, the interior lights cast, I think, a cone from approximately one block down or something. And so you have this weird thing where interior lights will light stuff to either, or sorry, no, a cylinder maybe, I don't know, um, whatever, it's, it's not a sphere, it should be casting a sphere, right, you know, around the light in all directions, um, or even a hemisphere, because usually the light's on some sort of fixed surface, right, which would obviously block the, um, the light from going behind it, but that's not how it works, because that would be really, um, really performance killing, especially with the amount of interior lights people tend to put in things, like you see some ships with hundreds and hundreds of lights in them, it would just murder their computers. So instead it's some really um, optimized system. It works fine as long as the lights are more than one block away from whatever you're trying to illuminate. If they're closer than one block, you end up with this thing where they don't light the object, they light whatever's past it. So. Um, Say, if, if this wasn't the floor, if this was like the side of a med bay or something, and the floor was another block away, it would be lit, the med bay wouldn't. Um, you've probably seen this on, on some worlds, and here you can see it with the table as well. The table is closer than one block to where the lights are, uh, height-wise, and so it doesn't get lit. And the coffee machine also doesn't get lit from above, it gets lit from the side. So it's kind of janky when you only have one block space of headroom, that's why I usually like to build uh, two block high ceilings. Also the two block high ceilings give you a lot more flexibility with where you place interior blocks. So you could have say a light above the bed or or some other thing there or lights above the, uh, the kitchen instead of having to stagger things. But that's alright. Um, I'm don't think it will change actually, it'll probably be left alone simply because, you know, you, you sometimes you have to sacrifice uh, aesthetics in favour of performance, but, you know, even with the weird lack of lighting on the floor and the table, it does look pretty neat in here, I quite like it. Um, what I did suggest to Xerxes though was throwing some wall lights in, say if you put one on this piece, uh, one here next to the door and then um, maybe one over here somewhere. Oh, I guess he can't here because, yeah, he can't, because the windows are taking up this block and then this block's taken up by the, the bedside cabinet. But, you know, a light there and a light there would go a long way to fixing this sort of area. And then the bed area, 
I don't know, maybe he could uh, move this light one this way. I guess these aren't actually, yeah, because the lights are there. These these windows are uh, not taking up this block space, so you could actually put one right here. And then that would better illuminate the bed and this whole area here. And I know Xerxes watches these videos because he's commented on them, like, to me, uh, in Steam in the past. So. There you go, Xerxes. That's how to fix the lighting in this room. Um, it might look a little janky, but then you won't have the weird black floor, uh, floor problem. Also, a handy reminder, um, for those who may forget, I periodically do it. Be careful about what colour lighting you use. Red light on a blue surface is black. Anyway, um, I think that's basically all there is to show. So that concludes our brief tour of what's been changed. May as well do one quick fly around back to the mining outpost. So as you can see, these asteroids are all very close together. Um, I think that's a mining outpost there. So we could quite easily build a mass driver system between them. It's just a case of aligning them properly so they're all aiming at each other. And then making sure that they send the mass at at sedate enough speeds it doesn't start knocking chunks off our stations. Anyway, uh, I'm going to wrap it up here, so I hope you enjoyed the video. Definitely coming along slowly. I'm much slower than Xerxes' world is, but I will get there eventually. I think probably the next thing I will work on once I finish the bathroom in the mining outpost is to go back to Zvezda station and actually finish the crew quarters, which I have been putting off for months. So maybe that'll be in my next video, maybe not. Who knows? Thanks for watching. And I will see you next time.